These Roval Rapide CLXs are my favourite wheels that I've ridden in the past few years, beating the likes of the Dura C50s and Zip 454s, thanks to them being stable, pretty light, and most importantly, fast. But how much difference can a set of super wheels actually make in the real world? Well, to find out, we're pitting them against Roval's new, much cheaper aluminium offering, the Alpinist SLXs. Let's see how much speed you can really buy. If you cast your mind back to last autumn, then you'll remember that me and deserter Liam put a whole host of carbon wheels through their paces to find out whether spending more resulted in going faster. The answer, well, it was a no. And spoiler alert, it was these Roval Rapides that were fastest. To be honest, I was a little bit relieved with that result because I'd been going around telling everyone that they were the best wheels I'd ridden in ages. Six months on and they're still the best wheel set I've ridden, but I completely get that they're not exactly cheap. Well now, Roval reckon they've got the wheel set upgrade for the more budget conscious cyclist. These aluminium 24 mil deep rims claim to be the pinnacle of what can be achieved with alloy. So it seemed like the perfect excuse to try and answer the many of you in the comments of how much faster carbon deeps are than a set of shallower aluminium wheels. We'll be running three tests, one up a hill, one along the flat, and you guessed it, one going downhill. Obviously, being quite deep, I think we can expect that the repeat is gonna be quicker on most terrains, but by how much? Oh, and one other interesting thing to note is that despite clearly being very different in just about every way, the two wheel sets are actually quite similar in weight. The Alpinist SLXs weigh 1,485 grams, and these are just 20 grams heavier at 1,505 grams. The rules. Dun, dun, dun. Obviously, we want to try and make this as fair as a test as possible. So without a wind tunnel, we're left having to rely on this nice still day for consistent conditions. My trusty quark power meter, and we're also using the same tires and tubes on both wheel sets. Of course, we'll also be using the same tire pressures as well. And then to get both the most reliable possible results, and because people like watching me suffer, we'll be doing each test three times we'll on both wheel sets, to try and weed out any anomalies and get a better average. Oh, and I'll also be wearing exactly the same kit for all the tests and holding the same position for each. Here we go. Well, that's all the riding done. The results are in and it's time to find out whether deeps will make you hard to beat. So we kicked off with a descending test. I'm not sure if it was too wise to do the easiest test first, but there we go. The descent in question was around 1.2 kilometers long and physics tells us that this is technically where we should see the biggest difference in wheel sets as aero becomes ever more important at higher speeds. As always with these real world tests, it is worth noting that there's always gonna be factors out of our control. The real world is after all an uncontrolled environment. However, we hope you agree it's still worth doing these tests as it is where we ride. And if we can't find a difference in a range of conditions, then it's likely you won't be able to either. To make sure that it was in fact the wheels that were the variable and not my bravery, the descent in question had no corners that required braking. And on each of the six runs, I set off from a standing start without pedaling. Let's check out the results, shall we? But before we do, please hit subscribe as it really helps us out. As we'd expect, the carbon deeps were indeed faster at descending. And whilst that difference might look small, this was of course only a very small descent. If you look at some of the proper mountain descents in Europe, then you can quite easily be descending for 20 minutes plus. On average, the much shallower Alpinist wheels were 1.8 seconds slower over our one minute 20 or so descent. That's a difference of around 2.2%. Perhaps more interesting is the fact that I held an average speed of around 52 kilometers per hour on each run. So using the data from all the runs, I put my aerospace degree to good use, used some CDA estimates, and calculated that this 1.8 second saving equates to around 16 watts at 52 kph. Now I'll be the first to hold my hand up and pick faults in this test, but that figure is in keeping with what wheel brands tell us. 
I've read from multiple sources that a set of 50 mil deep wheels can save around 10 watts at 40 kph. So it's not unreasonable to assume that some of the fastest deeps out there can save you this pretty tidy figure. As an add-on, yes, saving 16 watts is certainly worth writing home about, but we do also know that the vast majority of drag comes from you, not your bike or equipment. Having finished the runs, I did one final attempt no longer holding the same position on the drops, and instead did an illegal super tuck. That run took me 1 minute 15, and I had a max speed of 3 kph faster, a far bigger difference then than when varying the wheel sets. Unless you're very lucky or lazy, most of us don't do rides just downhills. This next test was along 11 km stretch of road with just a few rollers to test the performance of the wheels on more typical riding terrain. Again, we'd expect the deeps to be faster and here's what we found. On the full six attempts I rode at a constant 275 watts and managed to average within plus or minus one watt of target each time. Even so, our results are far from conclusive. On one run, for example, I was 20 seconds faster with the deeps on, and on others, only 10. We should therefore take the final figures with a pinch of salt, but we can conclude that the deeps were faster on each and every run when compared to the shallow alloy hoops. Cool, that's a bit of a tongue twister. Also, pinch of salt. On average, I was 13 seconds faster on the repeats. That's a difference of around 1.2%. Again, body position or pushing harder on the small rises is likely to have a far greater impact on the overall time. We found that swapping out the wheels, a change that in this case represents spending an additional 1,900 pounds, resulted in a speed advantage of about half a kilometer per hour. Whether that's worth it, that's up for you to decide. It's also worth noting that I completed all the runs solo. If I was able to share turns, draft someone, or even better, hide in a bunch, then we're looking at a minuscule advantage even smaller than the 10 watts that I predict the deeps saved me. So far, in every test, we've expected the deeps to be faster, and indeed they have been. However, there's one area that we see pro and amateur riders alike ditching the deep sections. We are, of course, talking about climbs. However, the two wheel sets we have here are more similar in weight than you might expect. Whereas usually you can expect a significant weight penalty by switching to deeper wheels, the Alpinist SLXs weigh in at 1,485 grams on our scales, and at 1,505 grams, the Roval Rapide CLX2s are just 20 grams heavier. As with all the tests, we've also been using the same tyres, latex inner tubes and tyre pressures to ensure that rolling resistance stays as consistent as possible. Having ridden up the hill at 275 watts on the deep wheels, I switched them out for the shallow aluminium wheels. To be honest, they sounded nowhere near as good, felt floppier and felt slower as well. I was therefore pretty surprised when I crossed the line in exactly the same time as on the deeps. The climb in question was around 1.35 kilometers long, had an average gradient of 9.5% and I averaged 12.2 kilometers per hour. It's therefore safe to assume that aero played a fairly insignificant role in the climbing times. Was one set of wheels faster on it? It's really quite hard to say. Having clocked exactly the same time on the first runs, the wheels then traded blows with differences far smaller than the margin of error. If the climb had had a gradient of, say, less than 5%, or I was a World Tour Pro climbing at much faster speeds, then arguably the aero wheels would have been beneficial. In general, deeper rims are stiffer both radially and laterally. This was in keeping with my ride impressions from the back-to-back -back runs, although this clearly didn't have a huge impact on the overall speed of the wheels. So, in conclusion, the deeps were indeed faster on the flats and downhills at least, and then no slower than the shallow wheels on the steep climb. Obviously, if you were looking to spend the same amount of money on a set of shallow wheels, then you could find something a fair bit lighter. Maybe that's a test for another day. Of course, when deciding on a wheel set upgrade, there's far more to consider than just pure speed. For example, price. There's a vast difference between these two wheel sets. The type of riding you do. Speed freaks will gain more from a set of deeps than someone who would rather meander up a climb. And of course, stability. The super wide rapides are in my experience some of the most stable wheels out there, but they're no matching crosswinds for a shallow rim like this Roval Alpinist. It simply doesn't have the surface area to be affected by crosswinds as much. If you want to know how these Roval Alpinist SLXs stack up against other aluminium wheels, then that video will be coming very soon. So in conclusion, unless the margins are very small, then a set of deeps is not going to win you that race. Body position, mental strength, and of course the power in your legs is gonna make a far bigger difference. 
Of course, that by no means means that there isn't a place for deeps. If you're looking for marginal gains, then as they come, this is quite a sizable one. Let us know if you think a set of deep carbon wheels are worth it in the comments section below. Please drop us a like and subscribe to the channel for more content and real world tests just like this one. And we'll see you next time.